Big red buttons, pushing, we're good, we're rolling, we're all in focus. Life is great. I am on a mission to learn something from everyone, and today continues with Andy Reynolds. Episode 79 of From Everyone, my man. Thank you for coming through, dude. Thank you for having me. Very excited. Very are you excited. Connecticut based now or are you still Maryland based? I actually just moved back to Maryland. Hell yes. Okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Sick. So you spend a night here and then go back down tomorrow? No, I'm going to go right after. Jesus. Yeah. You're a saint for I'm making this happen. I appreciate always it. Always on the move. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, I had to do it, man. Hunter was on here. And yes, I appreciate Zadex, that. So, uh, what made you go back down to Maryland? Um, I just, um, I miss my family yeah. a lot. And um, I was uh, really homesick. And uh, I was living with my partner up here. But yep. she understood. You know, it was, it was just missing my family too much. Every time I would go back, I would see my, my uh, niece and my two nephews. And... Uh, I would, they would be like a foot taller every time. Yes. And yes. I was like, dude, this is like freaking me out. Yep. So. I, I feel that 100% where yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I feel like as a kid, it was like, let's go on door. Let's get as far away from the yes, place as possible. Yeah. And now it's like, fuck, I kind of like being able to access everyone yeah. within an hour and see them conveniently. And like, you're right, those six months get, get older. And yeah. it also is like our family members get older too. Like those six months also yeah, yeah. become a lot longer. And mm -hmm. yeah, we like to focus on the, the six months of the younger folk, but it is the older folk, I think, yeah. that are also worth spending more time with. Hell yes. Still going to make this happen here. I know you got some tour dates coming up here. Uh, I have my little cheat sheet because I'm so bad with my brain. He's a cheater. Um, in October, we're going out with Your Spirit Dies. There's a bunch of East Coast states, I think. It's like here's yeah. Ohio-ish. Yeah. But uh, who else is on that run? Anyone else want to uh, shout it's, out there? It's with uh, Pains and all of God's children. Hell yes. Hell yes. Sick lineup. Uh, and then we also got No Sleep Fest in Houston on December 8th. Yeah, that's... Big road trip down there. That's going to be crazy. That lineup looks nuts. Yeah, a little two-day yeah. festival. You guys are on the second day, I believe? Uh, yeah, we are. Well, there's... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not revealing... <laughs> any information but there are some dates surrounding that that Beautiful. will be getting announced soon, also so. also are they like dates hypothetically on the way down there also like around the area what's they're like gonna the be um texas shows sick so very Hell excited yes. make that road trip worth it. i know oh, it's yeah. a long way to go for one show so you better know gotta do what you gotta there. do you know <laughs> hell yes dude and all the traveling yeah going down to maryland tonight started today in canada yeah what a fucking crazy day you've had so last night you guys were up there playing stand your ground fest i believe it was called hold your ground hold yeah. your ground stand yeah. your ground very different phrase yeah hold your yeah. ground fest <laughs> hell yes dude that looked nuts you said it was yeah full of kids dude dancing. it was it was cool because we're like we're a deathcore band right yep. and there were bands playing i didn't know what oi music is and then i saw these skinheads get up on stage for violent ways which listen to violent ways that band is awesome but he's literally up on stage and just like power chords and he's like oi 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 and i was like fuck yeah this is crazy <laughs> but like a lot of bands were like that up there and it was really cool because they were like it was a really different vibe for us you know first time outside like first time with this band outside of the country i've been out there before oh yes but um it was cool. We were really blown away. I love Canada. Canada McDonald's was awesome. Uh, How's but, it um, different? Uh, it doesn't make your tummy hurt <laughs> okay. a little bit. I mean, I, like someone. I think one of the boundaries guys was saying that at European food too. That, like, I think it was Nathan. Yeah, I think, I, that's how, that. I think Nathan was saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, being out there is the same shit. If somehow the food just doesn't fuck you up as bad, which no, is yeah. hard to imagine from here where everything is lethal. Yeah, they just uh, they love killing us over here. I think. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a good job of They're doing a very which is good pretty job. beautiful. I think, yeah, uh, we could all we could all use a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll let that one simmer for a second. Um, beautiful. And then you said there was like a younger people that crowded the show, which yeah. I think is a really interesting thing. Is like, yeah, we're starting to see like kids back at deathcore shows. Yeah, it's dude. Bizarre. Dude. Is it TikTok? Where are these kids coming from? Do you have any sense of like where people are coming? Why is this happening now? I don't. I'm not too sure. But like when we started touring. It was like just right from the right from the gate. It was just like fifteen year olds wearing Necrophages t shirts. And I don't know if I said it right. I don't <laughs> care. Sue me, you elitist. Um but uh <laughs> I can tell <laughs> uh, earlier today I watched uh what was it called? The different podcast that you were on. I'm forgetting the name of it. Uh I wish I wrote the name of it down, but I did not. Uh, and you also mentioned that yeah, the necrophagious band name yeah, is so dude. scared us. So this thing lives rent free in your head, is what you're terrified like, to say. You know what? Tomato tomato. <laughs> yep. I just want everybody to be clear, anybody who listens to this, 
I'm I don't really put up a front. I have about five brain cells, and they're about halfway disabled. You know what I mean? So it's like... That's why we're in music. Eh, if we had more brain cells, this wouldn't be how we spend our time. There would like, be a better thing we could get into. They're like, why would you, why'd you not become a doctor? Because I'm stupid. <laughs> That's why I didn't become a doctor. <laughs> we need more stupid doctors. I, I, I think you know what? if 2024 is so progressive, we need dumb doctors. Or you're just lazy and you're like, oh, I'm not doing that. Pull the plug. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Uh, there's a bad joke there that I won't say into a microphone, but I'll happily <laughs> say later off of there. All right. Um, beautiful. And then, yeah, so where are these kids coming from? Why are people, younger people getting um, into music now? And I don't is know. it everywhere? Was it, like, only East Coast thing? Does it feel like to you? Like, everywhere we've played, it's yeah. just, like, um, last No Sleep Fest, there's, like, just literally, like, 15-year-olds in Suicide Sounds t-shirts again. Hell yes. And, like, um, as far as, like... My upbringing with the MySpace stuff, I wasn't around during that. Yep. So, like, it's cool to, like, I'm in the middle of, like, the MySpace people. the I'm part of the Facebook group. And then the TikTok kids yep. or like, you know, the TikTok generation. And it's, very, I feel like after the pandemic, it's just like, you know, everybody was so cramped, yeah. you know. And I feel like it's not only a beautiful time to be in music, but, like, um any type of art. I mean, you do film and stuff. So like, I could imagine like, yeah. you you know, um, but, uh, the, um, it's, it's just cool to see this like explosion of this new generation of kids. Yeah. And they're just like, and they, and like, they're very just like, they just want to go to any show, any show that they can get. They're picking, they're just like grabbing on anything they can. Yep. And it's like, they, I like that. Like they don't, really care about genres at all or yep. anything like that because you'll be talking to a kid in a suicide silence t-shirt and you know you probably you might think like oh maybe they just listen to the old school stuff and then they're like oh i'm going to see left to suffer next week or i'm going yeah. to see hate breed yep. or hold my own you know it's like it's very cool to see yeah i think it's wild i think we talk about like the new generation having no attention span and i hate that as like a shitty cop out of like well people aren't listening to me because they don't have i think what it is that the new generation has a like they know what they want Yes. Whereas for us, like I think our attention span was longer because we would go to a festival and be like, I've never heard of this stuff. Let me watch the whole festival and figure out what the fuck I want. And now it's like we've gone through that virtually. We know yeah. exactly like we like deathcore. There's no need. Yep. And so like I think deathcore shows then benefit from this of like people don't have an attention span in the sense of like, yeah, they might not watch the whole festival. Mm -hmm. But once they know they like something, now it's like, all right, I love this thing. Let me get all of it. And the only place to go from TikTok is to the show. Like there's yeah. no next level digitally that you can ask because you have to go see it in person. And I, well, I was going to say, I think one of the coolest things about that is, like, um, I think, like, not just speaking for us, but for, I feel like, most of the bands that started after pandemic or even bands that started before that, if those kids fuck with you, they will ride or die for you. Like, we, like, we're in Tennessee, there's this band called The Extinct, okay. and their youngest member is, like, 13 or 14, Jesus. and she's down picking james hetfield Jeez, style 13. yeah Damn, like, hell yes. ju -ju 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 like like not like no alternate like straight up down picking yep. only and like every time we've gone they pulled up hell yes and they're just like and it's just like that's the coolest thing about this yeah. is like you know like i i didn't think i was going to be doing music again because i hadn't i was in another band before the pandemic and um i didn't think i was gonna be doing music again like this but like the shows are crazy like it's mm -hmm. just there's it, it's just I can't describe it other than crazy. I yeah. mean, I mean, you remember the one at the Webster? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, what? Like, it's like we were the oldest ones there. It was awesome. Yeah, it's so wild, and I, yeah, I feel like it's a great time. And I think I don't know. I guess TikTok is going to attribute to. It. I think it's an interesting time for like music and bands, where like in film, there's this huge boom that ha feels like it's happening right now because like computers are finally good enough and cameras are good enough that they're like consumer level we're like on our yeah. iphone we all have a camera that is now good enough and that's relatively new in the last five or ten years or so and like of course our laptops are the same thing we're like computer parts and this is where we're seeing like ai pop up all like yeah, the yeah. unreal engine green screen videos is like unreal engine's been around forever it's just that it was way too expensive for most yeah. people to access and now people like me can spend yeah it's still a computer still a good chunk of money but it's like i'm not spending a car payment to get this computer it's like a yeah, consumer yeah. grade technology and I guess for bands, it's maybe, yeah, all of us grew up with GarageBand having music on our laptops, so now everyone can do music, and it's this thing where, yeah, we can go back and make good old deathcore for the fun of it without yes. having to, like, drop 10 grand on a studio session yeah. where it's like, all right, if we're spending that much to go do a crazy thing, we probably should reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. But if we can do it with our friends, we can do it for fun, then it can be for fun. I think, yeah, you guys are the result yeah. of it. Well, I think that's, like, the coolest thing about, like, 
technology becoming so advanced. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with a plugin called Neural Amp Modeler, but uh, yes, this is the the new Quad Cortex thing. No, no, no. Okay. This is a free plugin that okay. this guy named Steve Atkinson. Steve, I love you if you're watching. Um, <laughs> I doubt he is, but um, <laughs> he yeah. Is a celebrity, I assume, yeah. But he basically made a free version of a Kemper. It's all okay. every profile you find on there is created by users. Like I can't afford a Kerry King edition Marshall JCM 800 that's hot modded, right? Right. But I can go on there and look that up. And it pops right up. Is it a plugin for Logic? Is it like a separate anything, thing? Anything. Okay. I, as far as I know, I think it's available for any type of doll Hell that yeah. you have. But I just was like, I, I got it. And I was like, I was telling all my friends. And they're like, you're lying. What do you mean? And I'm like, just go try it. Just literally go try it. Mm -hmm. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. How accessible these things are. And of course, yes, yeah, yeah. Unreal Engine is also completely free. And yeah. the way they bill it is like, after you make, I think it's a million dollars, they're going to take 5% of royalties or something. Oh. So to me, it's like. Cool. That's I'm, awesome. I'm fine for a long time. And of course, it makes them a ton of money because that's how Fortnite comes to be. And it's like oh, Fortnite's yeah, yeah, making yeah. them enough money for, uh, yeah, for them to not pay, make anyone else pay. I didn't but even it, think about that either. Yeah. But of course, it also opens up the gate of like the next Fortnite will also be built on Unreal Engine because it's so open and accessible. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to get 5% of that as well. So it mm. creates this environment that is great for me. It's like it welcomes someone like me and of like, yeah, come try it. And if I'm good enough, They'll make money off me. And if not, they were never going to make money off me anyway. So who gives a fuck if I puddle around in their little sandbox it's software? It's kind of like a win-win for everybody it's, nowadays. It's with so those smart. Things. Yeah. And I think that's where all the free platforms are going. I think Spotify is a similar thing. Of yeah, like, yeah. They're going to make money off of the people who listen to a ton of shit. Like, they don't necessarily need... They don't need to charge me a little bit to get into it. It's like, just... We're not going to be here for a long time. We're yeah, going to make yeah. our money off you. Go ahead. Come in the door. Yeah. No worries. We'll fucking charge ads with the wazoo on you, but... Uh, yeah, that's free products. Yeah. And Unreal, thankfully, doesn't have the ads. But, yeah, they do have the Fortnite, so the other big fish. I'm sure there's, yeah, way smaller things in Fortnite also up oh, there yeah. making a ton of money. Uh, but it's just nasty and wild to watch it all unfold here. Um, keep it fun in the Deathcore. I think you guys, yes, are really good at taking to, like, the classic Deathcore sound. I think it is very much a blast in the past. I think the fun you guys are having is my favorite part. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, even the song names <laughs> that I wrote down a couple of years. Uh, the one, my favorite personal is Artie Records Can Never, of just, like, yeah, Artie Records can never what? Like, it's such a brilliant yeah. marketing thing. And I was giving Hunter the same spiel of, like, in a... Uh, we talk about, like, TikToks and all these ways to yeah, grow yeah. a band. And those are all great. But this happens right <clears throat> in Spotify. This is, like, right at the point of entry. Someone is scrolling and goes, Artie Records can never what? I'm clicking. <laughs> like, I don't think it's an act. And that song has the most streams where it's, like, it's just yeah. such a, uh, an inviting title of, like, I need to find out what the fuck this is about. And it speaks to how much fun you guys are having. And it also works as a marketing tool. And it just, yeah, it feels like there's a perfect synergy there. Well, thank you. Um the uh, a lot of the names and stuff for us just really like just trying to be funny. I was in like yeah. a lot of the names are just quotes from Discord. Yep. Like who are you, Henry Ford? Is my friend David. He just like <laughs> there was a Discord I was in where like it was like a quote section. Okay. And it was like stuff like that, and I was like, w what? The <laughs> Allison Morkum one is probably the best yes. one. It's got amazing lore. Yeah. Did you? Or do you want to share that lore? Is that oh, lore top yeah, secret? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. So. David, I almost skated past it. I was like, wait, I can't not ask a follow-up, but it sounded like it was guarded under lock and keys. So no, it, it, it's great. Um, David was using a AI generator thing. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, he randomly came up with the name Allison Morkin and was like, write a movie script about Allison Morkin. And it was this AI-generated crazy script about this guy... <laughs> killing people who couldn't play the fucking trombone and like i was like we were laughing about it for like a good 45 minutes <laughs> it was like we were sitting like and it, it just like you can click refresh on this specific <laughs> yeah. one you know yeah. and it'll just get worse and worse and he's like my sweet allison morgan <laughs> i long for the day to return with you with someone who can play the trombone something like that but we were crying because they're like, how the fuck did this even happen right now? <laughs> yeah. It's like where you can take your brain with something. It's like, why <laughs> do we even go that far? Yeah. But um, <laughs> that one's probably, and in case anybody was wondering, you know, I I may have spoiled that Allison Morkin was not a real person. <laughs> I don't know anybody she's named Allison Morkin. Okay, cool. I, we'll, I think, yeah, I think she's taking on a personality. <laughs> we'll make, a, we'll make a, a cyborg or something. Yes. And bring it to shows, and her name will be Allison Morgan. Yes. Maybe she'll be petty and <laughs> like 
say backhanded compliments to you, you know? <laughs> That's what you guys need. I think that would really would change the live experience. Yeah, yeah. Take us back to good old crew cabanger days of death gore. He's an AI bitch on oh, stage. Oh, and then, and then she wears Ed Hardy. You nice. know what I mean? <laughs> nice. A little tramp stamp leaking that's, out That's for the right. Boys. The dolphin tail and everything. You know? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, having a little bit too much fun at Death Glory these days, but it's beautiful. I think it works. When you were like, name the songs, did you did you do it with like any marketing thing in mind? Or was it all just like, this is funny, fuck it, let's move on with our lives? This was, yeah, this was started as just like a bedroom project. I heard yeah. like, I I wasn't, like I said earlier, I wasn't around for MySpace, but my cousins were. So they were like, you know, like they got me into like Lamb of God and Killswitch, but then they're like, let's listen to We Mirror. And you said this was when you were like third or fourth grade yeah, yeah. on the other show. Yeah. That, yeah, this all started way too early in life for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, also yeah. makes sense of, yeah, how we get so extreme in the process, but yeah. Yeah, like they like the kids were like, oh, what are you listening to? Well, I'm listening to Raffi sing about Down by the River Bay and Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwiches. And they're like, what are you listening to? I'm listening to When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong by a Mirror, you know? Yes, which I got into in high school. So you were a full yeah, 10 years yeah, yeah. ahead of me and experience there. And it takes a toll on a yeah. kid. But um, the, uh, the bands that inspired Thus Spoke were Tracheotomy and Tactos, like these new bands that I had heard. And I was like, it made me feel so nostalgic that mm -hmm. I was like, I need, I need to do something with this. And it was like, I just like, like it is all for fun, but like, you know, it's kind of gotten a little bit more serious, but in the beginning it was really all about just like, let's see how fun and how like dumb we can get, you know? Mm -hmm. And how dumb have you got? <laughs> is there so more it's to getting be? worse. As it should. I think that's my only like fear of anything that's like nostalgic is like, there's only so far you can go. And then yeah. you're like reinventing something that doesn't really need to be reinvented mm -hmm. it's this like strange box have you like run into that at all have you dealt with that has it been something you've had to worry about yeah kind of it's weird it's funny you say that um like when i try to write things for thus spoke now sometimes because a lot of like i'll like sometimes i'll crack the joke that like myspace deathcore like the the melodic side of it is at the gates riffs that usually are opens on the eighth fret and the seventh fret and you're literally working around that and then like i said that joke so many times i think i fucked myself because i was trying to write and i was like i was like what the fuck why can't i do this right now i was like it's the same thing but like yeah like yeah. sometimes but i also think that like it if like a recipe for a song works it doesn't necessarily hurt to do the same thing mm -hmm. you know like um a lot a lot of outside of like the myspace death core stuff a lot of most songs are genuinely the same recipe it's kind of like a cake you know flour eggs milk all the same stuff but then you have a strawberry cake so you had strawberries you have a cinnamon cake, you know, like all just different spices, sure. you know, same structure, different spices. And eventually someone figures out how to make cupcakes and it's like, oh, fuck, yes, there's a whole dude. new and little that, thing we didn't think about here. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. And I think that's an interesting like challenge to go in where, yeah, you're creating the nostalgia from your past. And I think there's yeah, a, yeah. a beauty in that. But it, it seems like so challenging to me of like, yeah, it's so great. It's been so great for so long. And it seems tough to like go in there and be like, how do I make this better? Like, how do you how do you do Whitechapel better than Whitechapel did it? Right, like they they found the top of the mountain, and it's a fun challenge to emulate that. But yeah, I'm wondering, yeah, I'm wondering how we like expand on what they did, how we one up them. Yeah, that's like, um, well, I think, I think like, I I think a really important thing is researching your craft, no matter what it is. I mean, like, as I was telling you earlier, these the visuals you do for this are really good. You didn't do that overnight, yeah. you know. Like, I Thank think you. that like whether you i watched this lady called wendy day and she's a big person at interscope records who like got young money cash money records all those people eminem a little help with tupac and stuff too and she talks about research is so important you can create something that is authentic to you and authentic to what you're trying to do and you can make it yours by taking that research and like okay these are my starting points now. How can I branch off? Virgil, um, you know Virgil Abloh? I, yeah, I know the name. He yeah, talked, the off-white guy, yeah. He talks about the 3% rule. It's very interesting. And um, some people are a little get, get off-put by okay. what the what he talks about with this. But he's like, he says in the video, he's giving a speech at Harvard, I think. So, um, And he's known as one of the most creative guys in the world. Mm -hmm. And he goes, there's not one unique original idea in this world 
But the way to make it unique and original is you take an idea and you just change it 3%. And I was like, this is the what? And that really was like, I just it like for a little bit, I couldn't write music because that broke my brain. Mm -hmm. I was like, what, what is what, what, what is what? Yes. You know, that's a fascinating thing. And it, I think it is true. Like, as I think back to my own like music video process, it is starting with like, here are the four music videos we're going to reference. And then we're going to pull a hair from this one, a hair from this one, a mm -hmm. hair from this one. And now our, you know, our combination of flavors is yeah, unique. Yeah. And it is, yeah, like I, uh, music video storylines to me are the hardest thing to write. Cause it's like, we've seen every breakup story. Yeah. We've seen every burning building. We've seen every decaying flower. It's mm -hmm. like, how many more of these tropes can we write? Yeah. And it, 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 to your point, it is right. Of like the way to approach that is go, okay, We've seen all the burning buildings. How do I show this in a way that we haven't seen before? And it is that 3% of, right? I mean, there's only so many breakup stories yeah, you can yeah. tell. And of course, there's so many songs about heartbreak that people want to have that visual associated with. But like, I can't, I, I can show the girl leaving out the door only so many times and yeah. throwing the keys and like dropping the necklace, throwing the ring. Like there's so many things we've seen that you're right. It is that challenge of like, all right, we got to include some of that, but where do I find my new little niche angle there? And it's yeah. a, a real unique challenge that I, I don't know. I like that 3% rule as a way to like keep myself grounded of like, yeah, I don't need to reinvent the new thing. I don't need to find yeah. a, a, a heartbreak that is equivalent to a relationship. We can stay in this ballpark and just find a new way to tell it. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, um, you can, you can tell the story without putting so much pressure. I feel like sure. a lot of, a lot of people, and I was struggling with this, like, especially with like our new stuff is like, um, putting all this pressure on myself because act like you don't don't know did really good and i was like all right you know like the next one let's see if people care and like i like was getting all freaky and then i remembered that and i was like why am i even tripping like it's like when you start developing imposter syndrome and stuff yep. like you gotta really try and catch it quick because like it'll fuck you up like i was like yeah. oh but yeah it's like i feel like the music any art where it's different than a different type of job or like a normal job or whatever you want to call it is like, there are, you put these walls up, right? Mm -hmm. But like, if you just knock them down and keep remembering why you got into your passion, yes, then I think that the work, yes, it still is hard work. You're still busting your ass. It becomes so much more fun and filled with passion. You feel fulfilled, you know? Yeah. Is this something you struggle with? I think in the in the interview, I think you mentioned that, yeah, imposter syndrome was a real challenging piece for mm -hmm. you. And it sounded like it was something that you've done well to, like, stare in the face of and, like, really kind of come to terms with. Like, what was that? How did you do that? <laughs> I think it's something I, I still struggle with. It's something I'm still, yeah, trying to convince myself that I belong in these bigger circles that sometimes I end up in. It's like, I'm still a self-taught kid. I, I know yeah. YouTube. Like, who the fuck am I to be in this room? Mm -hmm. And I, in the same breath that it's like, I'm earned it. I know what I've yeah. been through. I know the years of work I've put in. Like, I know I've earned to be in this room. But still, sometimes you look around and go, yeah, there's some cool mm -hmm. people in here. Yeah. I don't know if I'm quite them yeah. yet. Yeah. Like, um, I watched, well, one of the things that helped me is I watched this guy. I think his channel is called The Cre Creative Minds. And there was a Frank Ocean clip Okay, that he he put up where I think Frank Ocean is talking about you have to stop beating yourself up yeah. as an artist because the minute you get that I've made it feeling or the success feeling, it's all those times that you said, you know, like, I'm sure, like, you've been in bands before. You're like, check it out. I mean, it's kind of ass. You know, things like that, they come back to haunt you, he says. Yeah. All those times yep. you made that video and you're like, yeah, it's, it's not the best. All of that will come flooding back. Yep. And it will destroy you yep. he says he's like it will fucking destroy you yeah. and i kind of thought about it when i was going through that that and it's weird things in my life just weirdly line up sometimes you know like it's like That's universal dude, yeah. fate yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. yeah and like um they i was watching this video as that like i stopped doing that but i was still struggling with the like oh there there are kids that were coming up to me at shows going you saved deathcore I don't think that it's very, very cool to hear that Absolutely. and stuff. And even people going, you saved my life and stuff like that. I'm very happy to be there. But like, um, that can really That's fuck with you, yeah. you know? And yeah. like, um, in the video, he says, he's like, why do you think all these big artists, when they get put on a pedestal, they, they like spaz out or get on drugs or, um, take their own life. Like Kurt Cobain was called the voice of his generation. And then they were like, wow, I'm really surprised he started doing heroin. 
Like, you know, it's mm-hmm. a, it's it's you have to be very careful with how you process these emotions. It, it's yeah. not normal to be idolized. It's not normal for that kind of thing. So it's like this is all from the videos too. The guys are amazing. You got to check it out. It okay. like it like for like if you are dealing with that thing, like straight up, it like really helps. But also, not to like steer off, but like steer wherever you want, I, my guy. Um, I'm following you. I for a little bit, I like took mushrooms as like a therapeutic thing. Sure. And like, cause I like the imposter syndrome was just the tip of the iceberg for the sure. stuff I was struggling with. I have really bad anxiety, so that was like something I dealt with for a really long time. And like, um, so that really helped me overcome that. But then it was like, you know, after like I get my ego in check and stuff like that, it's like, um, you know, there's all these different, not like in a, we're, I know we're always like constantly trying to improve ourselves and stuff, but like, um, sorry, my ADHD just lost it, <laughs> but, um, you're good, my man. The, um, it's better to show yourself like love, yeah. you know, and because yep. at the end of the day, like it's, it's your art. Yep. It's not anybody else's art. It's good when people like your art, but if you are putting your pressure on yourself for that art, then it can really ruin it for you. Yep. There's some quote that I have up on the wall in my office, and it, it's a, a long like, paragraph passage, but a couple of the big pieces of it that's always stick with me is like, one, it's not my job to determine how good my art is. My job mm. is to make it, and yep. it's everyone else's problem whether yeah. it's good or not. And my job is like just to see it through and let that keep the channel open is the phrase it uses. Like just keep creating because I can't determine how good it is because I'm so yeah caught up in the weeds of all the bullshit that I have no idea how other people engage with it. Uh, and it's also the idea that like there's only – only one of me in all time. So anything I make is therefore unique. Mm-hmm. And that's a really important idea to me of like, in the context of the breakup story, it's like, I feel like I've told this before. I feel like it's already been told before. How mm-hmm. can I tell it better than the thousands of directories before me? And it's like, cause they weren't me. They didn't have whatever resources I have. They didn't have the, the apartment that I have, like whatever I'm filming in. Like I really get a kick out of like in a music video, like it is a hundred percent unique. Even if I tried my best to emulate whatever Lincoln park, Whitechapel, fucking yeah, bring yeah. the horizon, whatever video, even if I tried my best to emulate it, one, I couldn't. <laughs> like, it's just straight up. It wouldn't come out as identical. And two, it's like, I don't have the same tools. It's not the same place. not the same people in the band. Like, there are so many unique factors in yeah. it that really is like, okay, just do my thing because I can't control anything outside of me. Like, all I can do is keep trying to do my best and keep my head down. I think the problem there is, like, keeping your head down and staying humble. Where there is a moment where someone comes yeah, up to yeah. you and says, you saved my life. And it's like, how do you... Uh, not that I have gotten that, but it sounds like that's something you've gotten or yeah, other flattering things yeah. that people can say to us that are really powerful and heavy. And it's like, how do you internalize? Fuck, I did that. And also go, I'm still not shit though. And I still need to keep making yeah. it. And balancing those two is always where I get caught up of like, I don't yeah. want to accept the good things. Cause I don't want to believe my shit doesn't sink. I don't want to believe that I can't miss. I don't want to believe that whatever nice things people mm-hmm. say to me, but it's like, if all I do is go, I'm going to get better. Then I'm also not really to give myself any like yeah. praise. I'm not giving myself the opportunity to look back and go, Oh fuck. Uh, I did. I want a lot better than I was five years ago, ten years ago. with This thing Uh, is that also something that you've like tried to, or how have you tried to balance that? Of like, yeah, we can have people say nice stuff to us when the room is dancing in front of you. It's like that's a real cool feeling, Mm -hmm. I would assume. But it also still doesn't quite silence the thing of like, I still try album number two. Yeah, and just because they're dancing right now doesn't mean they're dancing on whatever I'm writing. I think that um, I have just decided to let the car drive itself. Hell yes. Like I, there. Um, I know that you want to talk about the book later, and this will kind of go into Please, that yeah. a little bit. But like, the whole thing about the name "The Spoke Zarathustra," Nietzsche's take on it is, it's based out of nihilism. But mm-hmm. his take on nihilism is like, yeah, everything is empty of inherent quality, right? But you can choose what matters to you, and like. You can also choose what doesn't matter to you, too. Like, you can have, you can, like, focus on one or the other. And, like, when you're sitting there watching these different waves crash around you and stuff like that, but they're not crashing on you, they're just waves. There's nothing matters to them other than that, you know? It's like the, I'm I'm not, like, a religious person, but like, I feel like having faith in your process is what you can do to help balance it. Just trusting the process. It's not about, I think anything else than that. It's just like, fuck it. See what happens. Yes. 
the other piece that of this that I've loved to that I think has really helped me come become comfortable with this process uh, is there's a Teddy Roosevelt quote uh, called "The Man in the Arena," and one little piece of it is that there's no effort without errors and shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, cool. If I'm fucking up, it's like that's kind of part of the thing. And it used to be like, oh fuck, I fucked up, and now it's yeah. like, yeah, of course I did. I'm making videos all day. That is the only thing I'm doing. Obviously, somewhere yeah, in that yeah. process, there's going to be an oopsie, and that is unfortunate. I would love never to make a mistake again, but like. That is part of it. Yeah. And I feel like coming to peace with that was also been huge of like, yeah, I, w I hope that everything I make is the Mona Lisa. I hope it's all Starry Night. Mm -hmm. I hope it's all Van Gogh. But it's like, that just isn't how it's going to be. Like, yeah. there's going to be an up. There's going to be a down. And there's going to be some ebb and flow there that I think I've learned to get comfortable with. And I think it's easier for me when I have a client where it's like I can give it to a person. And if they are happy, then it's like, cool, I did it. I think in a band, it's a much different thing. Because when yeah. you're handing it to the world, it's like, there's going to be some people who like it and there's going to be a much yeah. larger amount of people who don't like it. And it's not because it's a bad thing. It's because what we do is so niche that like, yeah, most, well, most corporate coworkers would fucking hate the things yeah, we're yeah, making. Yeah. That just kind of mathematically is true. And it's this weird thing of like, yeah, I get to please one person, be happy. You have this kind of infinite battle of like, I want to please more people. Yeah. And there's never a ceiling on that number of people to please. It's yeah. It's like, it's like, um, art is kind of funny because, you are like you said like it it's rick rubin says if you read that book he's like your you your your feelings with your art they come first the audience comes last mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like you know we we want to be that director who is at like the spielberg level of course yeah and we want to be knocked loose touring with slipknot in front of 17,000 people at Madison yeah. Square Garden, right? Yeah. But, like, I think, really, it is, like, you can, you want to manifest those goals for yourself, but not compare yourself. Because I think the comparison yeah. and the imitation is where you can kind of really screw yourself. And that's where, like, yeah. I'm not good enough. I didn't do this. I didn't, like, like, I, when I was younger, like, um, cause like when I first started going to local shows, Knock Loose was that band, mm -hmm. you know, like they were, they, it was before Laugh Tracks came out. They were, um, coming around all the time to, uh, the Voltage Lounge in Philly. Yep. So I would see them all the time there. And then like, I started playing shows with my band and I'm like 17. So like, you know, I feel like most 17 year olds, they're, the anxieties are so it's high. It's the peak of our all of our bad qualities. Yes, in so, yes. All the jealousy, all the selfishness. Yes. All yeah, that so, peak, you, yes. so your ego's high. You're like, well, they're 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 selling out the voltage lounge. Why, why, why can't I do that? Well, it's because you're 17 and you're probably writing music that 17 year olds like, you know, and it's like Yeah. So it's like um I think when you get older, you learn to just like art is for you. It's not for anybody else. Yeah. Right? Like, and like, if that sounds selfish, sorry, but like, it's it, you're taking a piece of you and painting the world, like showing the world, this is me. Yep. You know, I think there's also a, I think the 17 year old is short sighted. And my, my long tangent here is that I got into playing golf this summer. Uh -huh. uh, and the reason I bring that up is because like, everyone's bad at golf. Like we think of like, Oh, I'm going to go out there. And like, if it take if the course is going to take me four strokes to get into the hole, it's going to take you 12 times the first time. And it's yeah. like, that's why golf is fun is because it is so impossibly hard. The idea of like, even like getting even like doing what is supposed like the goal is impossible. Like 95% of people never make it to just like the baseline of like fundamental success. And I think music is a similar thing. Like that's yeah, why yeah. being in a band is fun. Like if everything got successful, if everyone got to make money off this thing, it wouldn't be cool. Anymore. Yeah, There'd be yeah, no for fun real. It. Like part of why being in a band is fun is because knock loose exists. Yes. And then the goal is like, all right, most people can't be that. That's why this thing, whole thing is fun because it yeah. is so impossible that any ounce of success, any ticket sold is like, holy fuck, I did it. And yeah. it's similar to golf of like, you hit one good shot and it's like, I have to hit 60 more of those in a row to be Tiger Woods, but I hit one. And that's like, yeah, that's yeah. enough to keep you going. And I think, yeah, it's worth keeping that in mind of like, it's so easy to look at a knock loose and be like, that could have been us. And yeah, it's like, for real. it would have been if you had done the things well enough. Yeah, like, yeah. There has to be some ownership there as well that I think is uh, hard to swallow at times, especially the younger Yeah, guys. yeah. And that's a fair point. And I didn't even know that about golf. And I always would play golf. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? So yeah. That's <laughs> it's, a it's impossibly hard, and that's why it's fun. Or like putting is like maybe yeah, the simplest yeah. way. Like mini golf. It's like, in theory, it should not be that hard to put the ball in the fucking hole. It's 10 feet in front of you. Like there's one little hill. Like fucking figure it out. We're smart people. And the idea is like, uh, in golf, in putting specifically, I think from two to four feet you're expected to make the putt by five feet there's like a 75 percent chance you make the putt by 10 feet it's like a 20 percent chance and that's at like the highest level of golf that is 
Tiger Woods is like from 10 feet has about a 50 or 60 percent chance of making it. And like 10 feet's not that far. And then when you put it down to like pedestrian level like me, it's like, okay, if I am anywhere near the hole from 10 feet away, I did incredible. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck making the shot. Uh, and I think keeping that in mind is important for me. And as I look up at other directors, it's like, yeah, I can't compare myself to other directors because some of them have teams. Some of them have like yeah. 20 years of experience. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm a kid in Connecticut. Like, yeah, I'm going to be a step behind people in LA with a team of 100 people. That just kind of is yeah, the nature yeah. of the game. Um, you mentioned here that it's worth uh, researching your art. And it was a note that I wrote down. And you kind of were talking about how it's important to research it and get a sense of like the gaps you want to fill and how it works. Uh, I think I also heard you say you listen to like a lot of pop music and you listen to a lot of yeah, stuff that yeah. isn't deathcore and isn't metal. Um, I'm the same way where like I, I feel like I'm in the metal world, but I listen to so much like SoundCloud rap and like yeah. UK rap. I don't know why UK music is like UK drill me. is hard. UK drill goes way too hard and it's caught me. Uh, I have some theories why, but there is always some guilt of like, I should be watching movies. Like whoever the yeah. best camera guy is, is in Hollywood. He's not in our world anymore. Mm -hmm. Like he's for sure Steven Spielberg or one of his peers yeah, yeah. or something. But I'm not really a movie guy. I'm not like I don't listen to a ton of metal anymore. It's still my home and it's fun to check out. But like I find myself going to podcasts or other things to listen to. Uh, is that hard for you as a vocalist then to like try and be like, I should be studying death metal. I should if I want to play the best death metal record, I should spend all of my time doing this. But it's like, no, pop's fun too. Yeah, Charlie yeah. XCX or whatever the fuck her name is. It's like, yeah. that's also fun. How do you balance these two things? Like, how do you do you control what you intake? Do you just kind of let it happen? How do you approach that? I think I just kind of let it happen. Like, um, some sometimes I get really hooked on like if we, like if I write something new, mm -hmm. I will listen to it until it annoys me. And I know you're not technically supposed to do that because you can get the demoitis, but tomato, tomato. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think that made sense. But um, I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah like. Yeah. Um, Those five brain cells are working hard right now. Hey, like, dude, they're grace. pumping iron right now. They're <laughs> juiced up and they're like, "Yeah, brother, we're in there oh, cooking." Yes. But um, the um, sometimes I get this like I I have to listen to certain things. Like yep. I, we were on the tracheotomy tour and Drew put on Von Dutch by Charlie XCX, and I was like, "What is this? It is amazing." And sometimes I get just hooked on something yep. like that. Like yep. um. That, um, my partner, Laura, put on Chapel Roan, you know, like, mm -hmm. three or four weeks before we went out on that tour. And I was on the tour, like, H-O-T-T. -T. <laughs> like, I was, like, freaking out. And then, like, I never heard Sabrina Carpenter. And, like, I spent so much time listening to metal music that, like, when I, I still do, like, I'll put on Dying Fetus any day. But, um, like, once I started branching out, I felt like I could expand my palette on a, like where I might compare a vocal style I'm doing to the weekend, but it sounds nothing like the weekend. It's like, might be the, this flow that I heard on a weekend song mm -hmm. and be like, Oh, I want to do something like that when I, when I'm doing like my heavy vocals yep. and stuff. So like that kind of like back to the thing about the structure and with the flour and spices yeah. and stuff like that. Or like uh, a good example is like, I am a diehard Daft Punk fan. Okay. I love Daft Punk. That stuff is crazy. And, like, sometimes I'll hear a, a sequencer doing a crazy pattern. I'm like, I wonder if you can do that on guitar mm -hmm. or something, right? So, I think that's the way to do it. And, yeah, I always try and keep in mind that, like, I am – I'm very aware that, like, whatever I take in is going to come back out. Yeah, me. yeah. And so I always try – like, I, I always, yeah, almost have some, like, guilt of not taking in good things. And I try mm -hmm. and, like, make sure I'm taking in enough, like – like like fruits and veggies and not yeah, only yeah. sugar the whole yeah. time or not only candy the whole time but it is this weird thing of like the flip side of me is i'm like well no lean into those five things because whatever those like like i've been listening to a ton of suicide boys lately which is like i recognize it as trash music but it just <laughs> somehow <laughs> captures my attention it's like the perfect white noise for me to live my life with and it's one of those of like okay then lean into that like yeah, yeah. that is the part of my recipe and it's one of the the 20 things that makes me me or like i'm a i'm a big sports fan and it's always like how does that make a music video? And I don't yeah, really know yeah. the answer, yeah. but I'm sure there is a way or like somehow the camera works, some of the way that we tell stories in sports, like there are ways mm -hmm. and I'm always trying to be mindful, but it is this like, yeah, I feel like if I was a death metal band, I would want to listen to only Whitechapel and I would like almost feel That's guilty fair. about listening to anything outside of Whitechapel. But it's cool that you found a way to like, yeah, pull the, the weekend back in. And yeah, even yeah. though it isn't the same, yeah, you do a good job of trying to make it yours and figure out how to fit it in. Yeah, it's weird. Like sometimes I feel like, like, 
Like, because you've, you've been in bands before, right? And I so, actually haven't. I'm oh, really? so not musical. It's shocking. Where uh, That's kind of how I got into this, is that I wanted to play guitar, like, in middle school. Uh, and I was, like, filming covers of myself, like, guitar covers of, like, like Three Days Grey songs. Like, very, like, entry-level guitar stuff. And eventually got to the point of, like, I like filming and editing this way more than learning the songs. Oh. And learning the songs became a way to, like, give myself the opportunity to film. And oh. then it was like, well, I should just outsource this part of the process. Just only do the video part let someone else learn how to play the songs. Uh, and similarly, I've got an e-kit behind you that I got within the last year or so. And it's me going, like, I'm so, like, drums are magic to me. I don't understand rhythm at all. It just doesn't click at all. So it was half me being, like, one, on a music video set, it helps. I am a better director if I can talk about the crash and the ride yeah, and yeah. The, the double crash part, whatever the fuck, double fill, whatever. Um, it's also me going, like, I think I'm so bad at this that let me prove that I'm not, <laughs> that I have more than five yeah, brain yeah, cells. Yeah. Let me get all my five brain cells together and go, fuck, I can learn this if I really yeah. put my mind to. So long story short, like, no, I've never been in a band. I feel like I have been because I've been a, a, a hidden member in so many yeah, from yeah. doing the camera stuff and whatever. Uh, but no, no band experience. I think that it's cool that that led to you finding like, like something like that. It's kind of like, yeah. The way I started singing, I like when I wanted to start a band, I loved Mushroom Head. You know, you know that band? I know of them. Yeah, I don't so know too well. I like, I knew that band. I grew up on that band. But then my cousin showed me Born of Osiris in like eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And it was when the Discovery came out and they put on oh, all yeah. the signs. And it's not like a crazy synth part, but it's like the part where it's like, dan -na -na, dan -na -na, I know exactly. Dan -na -na, dan -na -na. That's, uh, I, <laughs> part of when I realized the guitar wasn't for me is when I wanted to learn guitar solos and not the rest of the song yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So that was one of the solos that I learned at like, yeah, one tenth speed or whatever the fuck I was playing at the time. But yes, <laughs> very familiar with that lead part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, I wanted to be like a keyboardist Interesting. in a okay. band. Like, and I like, I wanted to get this like thing called the Roland Juno GI for okay. like years. And then like I saw Suicide Silence play at like the Mayhem Festival when I was like in eighth grade. After shortly after that and like um Mitch Lucker is literally holding the mic this far away. Mm -hmm. And like they're my my uncle showed me him and he's like they have this song called Fuck Everything. Like I didn't I like I was like what and then yeah. my friend showed me the cleansing, and I didn't know this was the same band. And after I figured out, and I was like, dude, I watched the guy do that. And then, like, I was like, I want to do this. Okay. And then I recorded a video to impress a girl, <laughs> and that's how I... Uh, I'm sure she loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I got made fun of by everybody else. They were like... That seems plausible. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, the devil music. Um, uh, one... Take me to the time from getting introduced to metal vocals to recording the song for the girl. Are you just in your bedroom screaming? What is that learning process like? Is it YouTube tutorials? Do you have a, a cousin who's telling you how to squeeze your throat? Like, I remember like being as a kid looking up screaming tutorials, like yeah, putting yeah. a pencil in my mouth, like, yeah, you know, yeah, trying yeah. to like, bite it in your teeth. Like, yeah, what is that learning process like in those glory days? I, doing that video in specifics, I think that I was trying to sing a song like that. Like I like a heavy song or something. I think I was trying to sing "You Only Live Once" by Suicide Silence. That's and, a that's a good song for a girl. And, I can imagine. Yeah, her. yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, she was yeah, like, yeah. "You should, you should sing, you should sing more." You know, I think, <laughs> and I'm like, "I love you," you know. But um, uh, but um, so and anybody anybody's watching the video does exist on the internet. That's if you look up Ginger Apocalypse 1997, it will pop <laughs> up. And the yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And it gets better. Um, <laughs> you can only get better for a year. The quality of the video is the most <laughs> Walmart quality. I'm playing. I'm playing the song. The song's off an iPod shuffle into this like trash, like radio boombox. Oh yes. And like, I start off the video. I'm like. Hey Valerie, I'm uh, going to do this <laughs> thing for you and uh this is me warming up. Mm -hmm. and I'm like and that makes me go yeah. And like I like I just w I was so proud of myself after that and then like I like she's like she's so excited she's like I can't believe you did that for me. And um and then um just I can't believe it went well. That's yeah. maybe yeah. the craziest part of this whole thing. It's kind of funny, it, 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 um, but uh, yeah, and that, that was like kind of the, I, a couple of my friends that like, like my friend who introduced me to like Suicide Sons and stuff was like, 
you got to do more, bro. Yeah. And like that, like from like eighth grade then on is kind of how I started. But I started doing the Melissa Cross Zen of Screaming warm ups mm-hmm. like when I was in like 10th grade or something like that. Okay. So there's some formal training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, the other piece I need to get to is how did the song get from girls, girls' email address to everyone making fun of you? Like, does she post it somewhere? Does, how does it get out? Oh, I post, I posted it on YouTube, and then I posted it on my Facebook. Nice. And um, nice. All my and all my friends from school, uh, they nice. said yeah. some encouraging words <laughs> that are not appropriate for this podcast about. <laughs> What I was uh, being described as. Sure, yes, I can imagine some of those words. Uh, my side little tangent that is a, unrelated to podcast stuff, but is a funny thing for Andy to hear. Um, I work for a production company that does like fall and spring shows at colleges. So I was at actually Harvard this weekend, uh, and we were there. And one of our coworkers uh, tells a story of being in middle school and getting dumped via email. And then we recently found the email and oh, her yeah, thing, and we dude. got to read it. And so we we're like laughing about this, and some other person who was working goes, I got dumped via Minecraft. Awesome. And so the story she tells is that she just like play Minecraft as a seventh grader, and her boyfriend, boyfriend in middle school, goes, Hey, uh, this building's on fire. Can you come help me put it out? And she goes, and in front of the building that is not on fire, there's just like 10 sides. And the first one is like, Hey, I'm really sorry. And the second one is like, this isn't working out. And it's just, yeah, 10 sides of a breakup in middle school. And when you were talking about the vocal cover story, I was almost hoping like that was going to go badly. Uh, it's funny if it goes bad, then it goes well. Uh, and yeah, it reminds me of that. That was Minecraft. awesome. That was way better than what I said. That had me like monkey symbol clapping in my head. I was laughing for hours. Like I, I may never look this person the same. Like I know it was seventh grade. I know someone else helped you on Minecraft, but like no, you that's can't recover awesome. from that. That's good. It's as good as it gets. And again, it's prefaced with like finding the email of the first breakup was like the funniest thing. I thought I was already peaking. And then this stranger comes out of nowhere and goes, actually, actually, <laughs> level up here, King. Um, I have something <laughs> for you, sir. You know, it's beautiful. I yeah, I don't know how they came up on my show, but I'm very happy to cement it on the record. I love the way this is going. <laughs> this Good. is great. That is the goal here. That is the goal. Nice and casual. Um, I also, yeah, back into the casual stuff here. Um, uh, you mentioned that the thus spoke Zarathustra. I always say that name wrong, but I believe I got it right that time. Yeah. I say Beautiful. it wrong, kind of. Um, I was saying Thustra when uh, fucking Hunter was here. And I had Thustra. I was like, get it well, right this time. So, like, I believe it is Zarathustra, but I... So I, Hunter lied to me. Well, he's a good liar. Damn. No, but, Damn, um, I have a fucking word with his ass. But, hey, I... But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the... Uh, I say Zarathustra. Okay. But I'm also from Maryland and have a Maryland accent. Cool. Apparently. Yeah. Bad at English, not too many yeah. brain cells. Yeah. It works. See, you know what's up, <laughs> A hillbilly. <laughs> you uh, you mentioned that you uh, my the question I was gonna ask was like, yeah, why does that become the band name? And what you said in the other podcast is that it was just a book on a shelf. Yeah, yeah. What you gave the context was though that I thought was interesting is that it was at a time where you were like kind of the imposter syndrome time where we were just mm-hmm. blur- searching for philosophies. Uh, were there other ones that you attached to? Like, I'm curious of yeah, yeah. Give me the bigger picture of Andy. Where else did you uh, latch onto at the time? What other thing? What other philosoph- philosophical ideas or ideologies people um, caught your idea at that time? The story about, um, it's called The Allegory, it's by Plato, the story about the man in a cave. Okay. Um, That one is crazy because it really tells you about perception. Okay. And like... um, It's like some guy seeing his shadow or his shadow gets burned into some... Yeah, yeah, like these old old guys are chained up on a wall. I'll try to say it quick because it is a little long. Chained up on a wall. We got time. Oh, sick. (laughs) You also got to get back to Maryland. I don't hold you to that. I can I can I can drive any time. This this is now. Hell yes. You know? but, Live in uh, the present. That's right. <laughs> um that's another one I got. But um they uh so the whole thing is like they see their shadow and they're chained up on a wall and the sun is they're like aimed at this wall. So the only thing they believe is reality is sh- these shadows they see on the cave of people walking by, their own shadows. And one day when they're very old, one of the guys chains break off. Goes outside. And he sees a blind light. So he follows it outside. He doesn't realize he's going outside of the cave. And he freaks out. He's like, what? What? Because he, all he believes that reality is is shadows on the wall. Yeah. And um, he, like, sees the sun, and he points to him. He's like, hey, man, what the fuck is that? And then uh, they tell him, and then he goes inside. So excited that he's, like, expanded beyond his own horizons, right? Mm-hmm. He had the crisis. He's blown away. He's had the revelation. He's enlightened from it, right? Mm-hmm. And he goes up to the old, other two guys. He goes, yo, we got to get the fuck out of here. This is not this is not reality. <laughs> There's something else out there. And they look at him and go, dude, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. The whole thing about that is like 
you can look past the shadows, right, on the cave wall, look past your perception, but it's still your perception. Mm -hmm. And people don't have to believe you, and people don't have to agree with you, and it's your life, and live your life the way you want. That was one of them. Okay. And then um, the Tibetan Book of the Dead I thought was pretty cool. Um, okay. Just about, um, honestly, that's more of like a religious aspect of it, but um, I think philosophy, religion, any type of belief system, it's the same. You see these same universal morals, mm -hmm. morals, like pop up about being very loving, being very caring, holding your ground when you need to, um, and that was a lot of what I, um, I found like a lot of it is just like being a genuine person. Yeah, it's not about like be. You don't always have to be. Hey, I love you. I, you know, peace, man. It's it's not about that. It's just always, I think it's, the more you can keep it real is um, important for who you are because that leads you to finding yourself, you yeah. know, I think. And, like, the more that you keep it real with yourself and give yourself love, which is other aspects of, like, philosophical things that I found is, like, try not to be judgmental. Try, you know, like, try to focus on you, you know, don't, don't run your mouth, you know, you know, like, try to, those are all these, you know, pretty basic things yeah. that we hear in, like, the Bible, but also, like, in philosophical aspects. The irony of all of these great principles, like, they appear in everything. Yeah, we yeah. like to debate this religion versus that religion, mm -hmm. or this philosophy versus that. And it's like, they all kind of say the same thing. Yeah. And, of course, they can be interpreted different ways. And I don't want to, yeah, speak that every religion's the same because I know someone's going to yeah, be yeah. like, well, there's Excuse this one that me. doesn't let these people drive. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that one That's... maybe we can improve <laughs> upon. So, but, like generally speaking, what they're all coming from is like, love your neighbor, be good to people, be good to yourself, and like, don't fuck up the universe. Don't blow it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be blown up. And yeah. it's like, all right, cool. I can live with that. Uh, are these philosophies still something that like, you are pursuing? Where it sounds like you get like a real like clarity from this. I'm trying to figure out like, if this was a, a past tense thing or is this like a, almost a side project of yourself that you're still involved with? I feel like it's something after like digging into this, it's just a constant thing sure. with me. But like before, before I kind of like, started reading into that kind of stuff i was so miserable all the time and i just yeah. was taking so many things for granted sure. and like i just like i didn't i was not a nice person i was just very toxic and unhealthy and i was treating everybody in my life horribly taking out all my anxieties and frustrations of the world on other people sure. because of how much i hated myself and that's what at the end of the day out Outside of everything, it really helped me find love for myself. And that, beautiful. in turn, gave me the ability to give love to others. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful degree of clarity to have. And I think, yeah, we can all... I think it's... Yeah, I'm asking you, like, if it's a past tense or a present tense thing. It's yeah. like, it's a future tense. It's an always yeah, kind of always, thing. Like, yeah. It always going to be a game of always evolving and trying to keep yourself in check. And myself in check, right? It's the same yeah. game that I'm playing of, like, yeah, I... We got to be okay with ourselves first. That has to mm -hmm. be step one and day one. And that isn't that is easier some days than it is other days. Absolutely. It's, yeah. Worth keeping in check and being in mind. That like, yeah, we're going to have bad days. We're going to have to go back to square one of these philosophies mm -hmm. and go, okay, what did this Tibetan guy talk yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. And let's, let's go right back to the cave. Like, what, what the hell does the feather mean with the fucking scale in the heart anyway? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is important. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks to go back. Uh, but it sounds like it was really like, brave of you to explore the philosophy. I think it's very easy for us to yeah. get stuck in these like, negative spirals and like that first step of going out pursuing something is hard mm -hmm. uh my this is like a semantics question probably not the most urgent one here but were you physically reading were you doing like audiobooks yeah i was physically reading physically reading uh are you have you been a reader your whole life or was that like a new no thing? that was like over the pandemic you know people yeah. had certain hobbies i was doing it because i was like i think i might kill myself seriously like like it was bad like i was like I'm not doing good, man. Something's going on. Yeah. And, like, it wasn't getting better. And then, like, the first thing really was meditating, honestly. That was, like, the very first thing. I was – because the first time I actually was, like, I'd not – because when I first started, I was, like, I'm not doing this. You just sit there and be quiet. But then I kind of understood, you know, focus on the breath and stuff like that. And, like – There's some meditation quote that's, like, if uh, do it for 10 minutes, if you feel like you can't do it for 10 minutes, and do it for an hour. Yeah. And it's always stuck with me of, like – I, I don't meditate. I haven't been good at that, but I like uh, reading is one that I've like, yes, used. Yes. like I set a 10 minute timer and I fucking read. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't care. I, I have 10 minutes every single day to do this thing. And it's not quite meditation, but it is me going like, fuck everything that's stressing me yes. out. I 
sit down and don't be a stress ball for one second in your day. Yeah. Sit down and read a book and just do something recreational. Even if the other 23 hours and 50 minutes of my day are fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, At yeah. least I had 10 minutes of like, okay, I'm doing it. And it sounds like meditation kind of opened that door for you as well. Yeah, it was like at first, like, first it was that. And the first time I did it was like, like, I was like, what, what? And, uh, and then that like kind of got me into that kind of thing. And like, you know, like uh, the whole, I had like a hippie era. I wore the glasses and like, <laughs> but yeah. um, that, like, the glasses might need to make a comeback. I oh think, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Those. I tell you, I posted a picture as a side note yesterday and I'm, Shout out big ass truck. I Hell can't yes. see it, but I they had the, they were selling these crazy trucker hats with the extra <laughs> excessive rim. And I put them on and our Phil and Vendel had these because he's Hungarian, he has these like Euro glasses, and I okay. put them on it and I was like, it's funny he said because I was like, dude, this reminds me of my hippie glasses yep. and I might need to go get them. So yep. I think you've inspired me to be, you know, I'm I think I'm entering this like Don Camp in waking the cadaver arc where <laughs> okay. I'm dressing like I just got out of the gym or out of like a union job, sure. but then I think the hippie glasses, <laughs> yeah, bring it together as a conversation piece. Like, you look <laughs> like you look like a blue collar worker, but you also look like you know a thing or two about chilling. <laughs> you know, that's a character I would love to get to know. Yeah, yes. I think I think the glasses need to make a comeback. Yeah. I think that's, that's urgent on our priority list. Uh, but it's cool that yeah, the meditation then gave you some peace in that. Where yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not good at it. I don't think it's ever been super appealing to me, but you're slowly selling me on it, <laughs> that it is something yeah. that I think we should do. Are you still practicing? Yeah, sometimes sometimes I get busy, yeah. but I um, when I was doing it very frequently, I worked at an Amazon warehouse, and they let me teach a meditation class, so that was very cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Good for them. I know Amazon's uh, PR hasn't always been perfect about yeah. how they handle their warehouse. That's um, a nice little diamond in the rough, a little silver lining to the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, it was yeah. cool, man. And um, it was cool to see other people, like, first time doing it and having that same thing like i i was like who's this fucking hippy dippy guy like, yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. like the first time i was like i was like what yeah how did that work it yeah. was something that like for the first time because i was so miserable yeah. all the time and i was like nothing's work i tried medicine i tried i because like i was very depressed and stuff so i was like it ain't working and then this one time yeah. i finally get that ha ah, you know like the first time i have i was like how did this happen? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And the more I learned, I was like, that's very interesting. Was it like your first time meditating that you had that moment? Like a yeah. weekend? What yeah, was that it was, first aha moment? I was like, I was like, I've, I, I think I had no walls up. I was so vulnerably miserable that I was yeah. like, I just, let's do it. Fuck it. You know, like the first time where we were talking about like saying like, fuck it and just letting yeah. go of all that. That was like one of the first moments in my whole life where I did that. And there was no ego or nothing and no thought. And it just was like, you know, it just happened. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. Yeah. It, it's impossible. Uh, and it, it's one of those, like, there's a reason meditation has been around for so long. Mm -hmm. Like, every other form of medicine has come and gone. And even our current day and age, it's like, we have all of these prescriptions that we love to give. And I'm sure that they are great. I'm sure in 100 years, it's going to look wildly different. And 100 years ago, it also looked wildly different. And it's like, well, there's this one that's been around for thousands of years. Maybe maybe we should give yeah, it a yeah. once in a while. And I'm, yeah, speaking to my my own, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My own pessimistic self of like, mm -hmm. there's no way fucking sitting still is good for me. But I'm sure it is. I'm sure yeah. all of my day is spent trying not to sit still because it's uncomfortable, right? Yeah, it's easier for me that. to be in motion and to be creating things. And like, I think part of why video editing has worked for me is because I can do it whenever I want. And mm -hmm. like, if you tell me I have to work from nine to five, my body shuts down and it goes, fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. Dude, yeah. But I wake up and edit at 8 a.m. and I work till 8 p.m. all the time. And somehow because it's self-imposed, it's okay. The flip side is then anytime I'm uncomfortable, anytime I'm mad, sad, happy, confused, whatever the fuck I'm feeling, it's like, oh, let's go edit. This is, this is a way out of it. This yeah, is an yeah. escape. And it's beautiful that I've been able to turn an escape into a living. It's also like, I understand that isn't perfect. I understand that if I'm stressed about work, going to do more work isn't a great way to yeah. solve that problem. Like there has to be a, a longer term solution. That's where, yeah, reading or some other of these little strategies come in and meditation sounds like one I should add to the add to the pile at this point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a good one. Yeah. Are you practicing other like spiritual things or is that the one that's really um, captivated you? I used to You're do a crystals person or you astrology person. Like how deep does this run? I was getting really into that stuff. Okay. But some of those people weird like sure. it, like it is weird sure. that like the extremes of any dude any end yeah anything 
It's like weird that like the things about like um oh it starts with that metaphysical things, right? Mm-hmm. It's weird that all this stuff about that and like, you know, collective consciousness and everything's connected and we reincarnate, but also there's aliens and r- r- lizard people and QAnon and all this. And like, you can go down a hole oh, yes. and like, it starts out with meditating and then you're it's like, kind of a fun hole at first. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, kind of dark, yeah. You say, um, and then, uh, sorry, totally. No, 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 no. It, you know, it's funny. I like when, um, you, I, I know you've had Kane. On yes. here from Vomit Forth. Kane. Shout do out you, Kane, yes. Do you, have you seen when he does the field agent thing? I don't know if I have. He posted this thing as a side note. He's the funny, one of the funniest guys he's I know. He's incredible, so yes. He's yeah. like, I was at the Danbury Mall, and the field agents were following me. And it's like, there are people you will meet who will be like, yo, your fucking pillow, your fucking pillow, man. I'm telling you, it's it's trans, oh, yes. it's transpiring <laughs> yeah. things to the lizards in, in Antarctica. Yeah. I like, It's so funny to me that like, it's like, no, it's our cell phones and it's McDonald's. Like, we already know it's killing oh, us. We yeah, don't need yeah. to look any further. Like, we already have, have the answers in front of us. But that's okay. Uh, no, what yeah. do I know about the universe? But That's right. Um, I like to think I know something. Um, hell yes. I feel like we've covered a ton of ground today. I appreciate it. Uh, I like to wrap up on two little things here. So, last, so yeah, two little questions for you. Uh, one is, what are you currently learning? So, obviously, I, I joked the show is, yeah, it's called Something From Everyone, the idea of learning something from everyone. And, like, that started as, like, a... I didn't want to call it the Peter JT show because it felt very yeah, like, yeah. egotistical. So I was like, I got to name it something. And the idea of learning something from everyone is like a noble enough thing of like, yeah, I just want to talk to people and learn what the fuck they know about. I think uh, what I've been surprised by this is I tend to talk to people and go, oh, they're the finished product. You know how to do vocals. You know what mm-hmm. the spoke is. And it's like, no, everyone's just like me. Everyone's still going like, ah, I think I'm good at what I do, but there's this one piece yeah. of it that I would love to be better at. What is that thing that you're working on now? Is it in growing the band? Is it songwriting? Is it vocals? Like, yeah, what is something that you're actively pursuing and trying to make yourself better at? Cooking. Cooking. Hell yeah. Yes. I've like, okay. When I, um, I'm a dog shit cook. Please learn me something. Yes. If I, if I leave this with meditation and cooking inspiration, it's going to be yeah. a hugely successful hour for me. So, yeah. I, um, <laughs> recent, okay, like, I was, I like, probably four or five months ago. Okay. I started. Packing my own lunches to work because sure. I couldn't, I can't eat fast food, which is funny that I was eating Canadian fast food. wasn't giving me a tummy ache. The food here literally makes me feel like I'm getting stabbed yes. in my stomach from the grease and the oil. But it oil. tastes so good yeah. on the way down, dude. Yeah. Who gives a fuck what happens in an hour? It's about the present. 30 seconds after White Castle, you are yeah. regretting why you ate, <laughs> why you consumed eight of those sliders, <laughs> and then four of the chicken ring things. I can imagine that adding oh, up to a problem. Yeah, <laughs> scary. It's scary, but um, I I started doing it because I was like, I I have a problem, right? I I can't eat this stuff that I used to love eating. Yep. McDoubles caused me severe depression. I can't eat those. Yeah, but McChickens though, dude. I can't. Ah. I can't eat it. I like. We'll, it, we'll, we'll revisit that one. Yeah. I'll let it slide for the moment. Maybe I need to take a probiotic or something, but. I started cooking my own food, and I was like, okay, I feel better. Mm -hmm. And then the one thing out of all the cooking that I've really, like, it's like a passion now is I used to work at this place called Rosie Lee, and it's a tea shop but also just pastries. And the first day I was there, because if you ever get to meet him, it's a place in Mayo Pack, New York, and Colesbury, New York. If you ever get to meet John Kuhn, he is an Elon Musk creative Dude, like he okay. started out in fashion design, and this is gonna all tie back a pinky promise. When I met him, it was like talking to another artist because he started out in fashion design. He was the guy who designed the cars on Pimp My Ride. He designed the outfits on Fast and Furious. Like this guy is worked for Jay Z and stuff. So like, I'm meeting this guy who's at this higher level, mm-hmm. and he's giving me all this advice. But the coolest thing that he ever showed me is the forty layer croissants that we get got in from France. Okay. I don't know what it is. I was cooking, and then I was like, dude, I'm looking up a video on how to make... Because when I left, I was sad, and I was, I was sitting there one day thinking about... Um, sorry about this ramble, but I promise it's getting Please, me. please, please. But, um, You're good. The, uh, I was sitting there thinking... Of, I watched a croissant video, and I was like, man, I miss John. I miss Rosie Lee. So I was like, I'm going to make 40-layer croissants. And the first time I did, it literally took like eight hours of... <laughs> dude. That is no joke. And then 
you do it's all so funny to make dessert for eight hours dude yeah it's crazy <laughs> but like i out of all the cooking things that is my thing right now that i'm like i have i have to this it's it's like chiseling marble dude yeah. it is crazy but like because you do the folds like you what have the to fuck is a 40 layer croissant you so so they you take dough butter a block of butter and then fold the dough over okay and you fold that 40 times and in between each fold it has to sit in the fridge because that's butter it'll melt so you have to literally fold it you know uh the thing the i can't roll think it. roll it yes yeah. you see, you're smart man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um it's a big word yeah. i have to pull out there yeah um, their brain cells are working hard <laughs> but it's a lot of work to sit there and you know you're rolling it and in between each of these folds it has to sit in the fridge for like 15 to 20 minutes and you're folding it like one two three folds so now you've got six so it's really okay. you're only doing that like i don't know the exact amount because i'm not yeah. a french baker but um sure you do it like five or six times okay you know it's like that's on its own is like an hour mm -hmm. or over a couple hours but like the process of it, it's so crazy and then you really you get to the end you know they could come out anyway and <laughs> yeah. that's what it's so it's so awesome dude it's yeah. like that's but that is what i'm learning right now 40 layer croissants the french way okay is that your specialty like you said you got into cooking is that like the one thing that you got into cooking or is there like a specialty dish that you learned first um one of the first things i learned when i was really young like this is like but i didn't like get seriously into cooking until like a couple months ago okay but, okay um have you ever had like breakfast gravy like i don't think so it's like pit beef gravy That's over the biscuits. most maryland thing yeah, yeah. yeah very much it's, the maryland they thing. um they put it over biscuits and, okay um it's uh my grandmother's recipe and you take sausage and you cook it and then you put flour in the grease and put milk it's very simple but sure. it's a comforting dish and if you ask hunter about it i made it on tour okay. like in this rice cooker which i'm sure he would love to tell you many jokes about <laughs> but um that's like one of my favorite who was joke about a rice cooker oh uh, you would be surprised I might be. <laughs> but yeah, that's like one of my specialties. I like breakfast stuff. That's like my main thing. Okay, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Hell yes. Do you feel like it's, has it paid off? Like, are you like, is White Castle still completely off the table? Or are you starting to be like, I miss that old guy? White Castle is like, if I am, if I have no options, sure. if there are no options, like if I can't, because like, obviously, like I try to cook when we tour, but it's like, it's difficult. So sometimes that's you hard. run out yeah. of time. Yeah. But um, if I can, I will do it. Okay. Um, but if if I do have to get White Castle, I will I will pray to whatever is above me that uh, it doesn't hurt. It hurts every time, but you know what? Just for that second, it's worth it. You know, <laughs> so worth it, dude. That second makes all the other seconds of the day. Yes, feel so much better. Um, hell yes. Uh, last question for you: uh, interest outside of music. So we talked a lot about music. I guess cooking is a good answer here, but you can't use it again because that's my rule now. That's true. Um, but yes, what are you doing outside of music? So we talked a lot about the, yeah, the creative process here, the artistic process, the interior process here. Uh, what is another hobby outside of this? You play video games, you play in sports, I guess cooking again would have been the great answer here, but you're not allowed to say it again. So <laughs> figure yeah. something else out for me. Um, I like exercising. I think I'm getting hell into yes. fitness okay. a lot more. I was through what? Like, uh, are you weightlifting? Are you running? What? Uh, just cardio. Jiu -jitsu? I get that runner's high. Like hell yes. Crazy. Okay. But, um, I would love to be able to, get into like heavy lifting again yeah and like eventually it'd be cool to do like some kickboxing or something like that sure i um i mean we talked about reading reading is a big thing for me um i like researching about like skincare products and soap <laughs> okay. i like before it's so niche it's so beautiful dude, yes like um before i got into cooking i was looking to like start a organic all-natural soap company and i was i still want to do this Okay. But like, um, it's like, I just want to make all natural soaps and skincares and stuff like something about that. I don't know why it like, it's weird things that I'll we grab onto. On yeah, yeah. 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 And, but like, that's like another thing is like that stuff. Um, are you making like your own prototypes? Like how far has this gone? Are you like combining um, your own shit and making your own? Like, is your soap bar currently a one of one? No, I, I've, okay. I've just, I've, I have all these things in like a google drive sure. of how to make it i just haven't had the time or the money yet yeah but um i want to do it because like it, it would be cool and like i've been like you, you can take the soap if it's really good and you knock on it and it's really hard see i'm like i get excited about this Please, stuff, but, yes. um, 
it's like it's cool like that that thing I, I just really like skincare it was like at first it was a thing just a healthy routine thing for me yeah like same thing or i'm not gonna say it, the c word you know but um there's a couple c words uh, <laughs> but um they were just healthy routines i was trying to keep just keep my mind busy yeah and that's how they kind of turn into passions outside of music hell yeah that's beautiful to have other things to have a focus on yeah i think golf for me is a really big like a big step of like i've been so focused on videos that i just haven't let myself explore anything that's not and golf it's like it is the most not music thing and that's the best part of like i would just go out there and be like i'm so bad at this thing cool <laughs> let's go outside and be outside and be bad at this thing and not worry about videos for a couple hours and yeah, that was yeah. a, a huge step this season it's like being able to like mentally be like okay I'm going to do this all the time, but it doesn't have to be literally all the time. It can be like a full-time commitment that I then, yeah, give myself a little window of freedom from, uh, which is very rare and very new for me. And it sounds like, yeah, it's good for you to have the the soaps and the other things we're working on to, yes, to diversify our interests and not be like solely occupied with Thus Spoke. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if it, if like your passion becomes your job, you have to have a decompressor. I feel like a lot of famous artists and yeah. stuff did other things like I'm into knitting, you know, or something like that. I've thought about like uh, bird watching as another one I really want to get into. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> I just I've like, dude, fucking birds are awesome, man. If you get too deep into bird watching, I'm gonna become the kids in middle school who are making fun of you. It's for okay. The vocal cover. But I'm gonna get a. I'm like I. You know I have no shame. Um, I'm probably gonna get a tattoo of an ostrich because it's my favorite animal on the entire planet. <laughs> Sell me on it. What makes an ostrich so cool? Um. And then we'll get you out the, of here. Uh, Let me throw out the ostrich first. They can literally destroy you with one kick there's a video of an ostrich kicking a metal fence like they put for horses sure. and it goes boom okay it like literally he folds the fence in why half why not like an elephant though they can fold it even further i might have to look at now <laughs> as a side note, not a bird but no yeah ostriches are awesome but they are too expensive i've, I've looked <laughs> to I have, have a, a pet ostrich yeah dude, i i was well, i was in eighth grade see i i there's a picture i have to find and show you there's a long, I had this long sleeve from beyondshirts.com <laughs> of a giant ostrich smiling like, and like, I'm like, I look back at that and go, why? I, you know, I that wonder why. getting into suicide styles makes so much sense. Yeah, you see, I'll show you videos of me doing vocal covers of them and I'm wearing the ostrich. Oh, as a side note, before I forget ADHD, sorry. I'm really into hydroponic farming. I've never done it, but I want to do it. Okay. That was a side note, sorry. That's like farming, but like in a thing of water, In the right? water, yeah. Yeah, okay. Re really big into vertical farming. Okay. Right. You got a diverse array of interests. Yeah, it's fun. It'll be fun to watch all these unfold. I will keep up with you. I'm looking forward to the updates on Salt. Hell yes, we did it. Episode 79 of From Everyone with Andy Reynolds of The Spoke, Zarathustra. Where can people find you online? Where can people find you online? Where can they support the band? Where can they go find tour dates? Yes. Where do people go to tell you that you're awesome? Um, we're really active on Instagram. But we um, we don't have a Facebook, um, but uh, if you find me on Facebook, just message me and I'll message you back. But uh, Twitter, so, um, Twitter, Instagram, the music is available on streaming platforms everywhere. I believe the Instagram is like TSZ Deathcore. TSZ Deathcore. I think the Twitter is the same thing. Hell yes. Um, as a little side note, it's not going to be out for a little bit, but we got new music coming, and uh, I'm very excited. Woo! We are playing some new things on Whoa! the future tour. As a new spoiler. things being heard in the coming months. Uh, in October, opening for Your Spirit Dies, and on December 8th in Houston at No Sleep Fest. Andy, you're the man. Drive safe. Looking forward to it. Appreciate um, you. Yeah, you're the best, dude. Today ruled. I appreciate you. Episode 79 from everyone in the bag. <laughs>